And to me, this is my, I love this lecture because this is what makes it fun for me to do this. I really like making these sites, they're fun. So, you know, we don't make sites like this. This is, this is actually horrible looking. It, it's actually an incision, it's a flap. And we don't do this anymore. So this is obviously bad recipient site creation. And you saw these, these differences of fixing these bad results. Even they're not plugs, they still don't look right. So remember, you have to memorize this, the Norwood pattern. If you've memorized this, you can create patterns that look right. The recipient sites vary based on the region. So each area, central forelock, the angles, all these angles go straight forward. These cascade down, these go straight forward, and this goes in a whirl. I'll show you that in the next slide, hopefully here. You can see straight forward, it goes down. In fact, on the side, they go like this. Slowly cascade. See that? And these actually go back a little bit. In the crown, they go in a circle, and they go up. So this is showing the angles. So if you create these angles, the holes, wrong, they won't fit right. If you make an angle this way, you can't comb it and it looks fake and it, it, it doesn't create density. These shingle on the scalp, they, they cover the scalp, that is, if that's a hard word to understand. So you see how also the other very important thing about the head, there are no abrupt transitions. In other words, it doesn't go here, then there, it goes slowly. So one thing in St. Louis, I really want to watch when you make these sites, you don't go whoosh, whoosh. You go slowly, slowly. Everything is transitioning slowly. God did not create this where it's going everywhere. It's slow transitions from one region to the next. And here's another thing, slowly. So this here is you go very low here, otherwise it looks fake and, and doesn't create density. You go high in the crown, and the reason for this is the exact opposite reason. In the crown, they're all competing for space. They're like in a circle, okay, like this. And when you make them low, you have a flatness to the crown that doesn't look good. You want it to lift. So a balding person back here looks flat. You want it to lift. And in addition to that, they can't fit too tight. But when you angle them high, they fit closer together. And so this is the opposite. And then when you go lower in the crown, you want to go lower. So this, everything is transitioning slowly. This is called the angle. This is angle. This is direction. Okay, from the scalp. We'll talk about that. So this is what, here it is. So anteriorly, angle goes like this. We just showed that in the last slide. And direction. Don't worry about tilt. Direction is this way. Okay? Remember the box. This is so important, the box. There are many ways to make holes. Parallel, perpendicular, micro punch. I don't make these anymore. They, the, the survival is a little bit less than perfect. These are the two ways I make them. You should forget about this. This is probably too complicated. But remember, I'm not going to teach you how to do it. I'm just going to show you why I do what I do so that you can understand the creativity. These sites are easier to make. They, may, they follow in the direction of the, of the hairline, so they allow me to point the hairline. They also um, make it easier for the, the, the staff to place into it. These can create more visual density, but they can cut through existing hairs, and they don't make the hairline, the directionality, well. Why? Let's show this. If I put a graft into a slit like this, right, and I have three hairs in there, it can't go up. Does that make sense? Like this, okay? If I make the site this way, it can ride too high. But if I make it this way, the direction of the hairline can be off. So this is why I use sagittals for hairlines, and for three hair grafts I make coronals. You don't have to do that. And again, just to show you, this is just, I, made, I just documented, I made one hair sagittalis, two hairs sagittally, except first row, and then coronal, so that I made a transition of one row of coronal twos so that my placers know which are ones and twos. Okay, don't worry about this. Don't even need to translate it, because the point of this is if you try to remember this, it's impossible. Don't even, this is just a design, okay? So this is showing a male hairline going forward. This is a transition going, you see how the transition is slow? Okay, this is to the temple. 
This is the crown. You see the transitions are very gradual. Female hairline, the whorl is very slow transition. So we talked about this, right? I just put this up there as a reminder. How to calculate how many sites you're going to make based on a harvest. These are different needles that I use. 20 gauge for uh, one hairs, two hairs, three hairs. This is a, a small blade for larger grafts compared to a needle for one hairs. Oh, sorry. I was going to, I thought it was a video. But this is just, I, this is different because I make the tumescence a little at a time because this takes me an hour and a half to make. The donor harvest, I do it all at once. The tumescence, minimizes blood supply problems. This, you want to make sure the graft fits in size and length. If the graft is too short, the site is too long, the graft will fall in and you have a pit. Position the patient flat because if the patient is lying down, it's easier for your hand to make a site that's low. Does that make sense? Because you want, if he's sitting, it's too easy to make a site that's too high. You want the person lying down. If, if you're making the crown, you want them sitting up. Because the, because the angle is high. Remember that. Uh, this is just showing you making some sagittal sites. I'm counting. One, two. Okay, and I'm making a, a pattern that I will explain. These are coronal sites. See the needle turn this way instead of this way. Again, just to show you. Let's let me show you the hairline step by step. I first draw a line. Then I make my one hair sites irregular. Then I come back and make another pass to make it more irregular. Then a third pass to make it more irregular. So you see I'm constantly going with these one hair graphs sites to make it more irregular. And then I build my two hair sites behind it. So I constantly want, you want that line to be invisible. So I will fuss and finesse and work to make that line irregular. More two hair sites. Then maybe I'll use coronal sites to make my three hair sites. Here is an example of the line with maybe a zone of two hairs going, or one hairs and two hairs. One hair sites to make it irregular. This is not regular. More one hair sites, more irregular. More one hair sites. Two hair sites. Do you understand each of these contain two hairs? 
than my coronal three hair sites. You should do everything with sagittal though because the coronals are hard to, to control. Think of a coastline. A coastline is irregular and the closer you get, the more regular that line, coastline is. Here is sagittal, coronal, coronal here. And again, don't worry. This is just showing you my design. So the creativity. Sagittal, coronal, sagittal. The other nice thing is you can do a little bit of convergence going inward. Be especially in the hairline because it makes this denser looking. So it's just fun to look at these designs so you understand this is not random. There is a pattern. Just showing you patterns. Again, don't worry about what I wrote there. This is really not relevant. If you want to photograph, you can. Let's, this is what I teach you in St. Louis. I need to watch you make sites. So a melon is great. So I bend the needle first. Ready to make sagittal sites. Ready to make coronal sites. There is my head. See the person's lying down. These are too far apart. Too close. Not interlocked. You want them interlocked. Splaying. They should go priyama, straight. Different. Oh. Different. Oh, sorry. Here we go. You see how this is very open and this is very tight? You said, you said that's very picky. It's okay. You want to be precise. See how these angles go this way and these go this way? Not a good result. I mean, that's going to be okay, but you could be better. Tight, loose. Another error I see with my students is when they make the site, they don't go all the way to the hub. Too shallow. Eto luce. Deep. So, too straight. Okay. This is too irregular. You want it consistent sites. Okay. I like redundancy. The more times I show you, the better. First row of ha one hairs. I make more, and sentinel hairs are the ones floating out here. Then I start building my two hairs. Little holes I fix. Then it's important to do exercises where you try to make it 20 per square centimeter, 30, 40 per square centimeter. 
Make a box and see if you can do this consistently over and over and over again. Then pretend you have 1,500 two-hair graphs and see if you can fit it all into this whole space. Let's say this is 100 square centimeters. Make a crown. This is advanced. I would not do this in your first few years. And then make your sites. Different design. So hopefully that was interesting just to understand the differences.